Hello and welcome to the first ever Ferrari Chat Report. Uh, the name is still up in the air, but I'm going to give you kind of a, a new style overview of some recent events related to Ferrari. And today I'm going to discuss uh, the passing of Sergio Marchione. Obviously, he had a very big impact on multiple brands. Um, he filled a lot of roles. And, and the, really, the question is, with his death, how, how the people uh, that were replacing him, how will they carry the torch? But before we get to that, we need to understand uh, how Sergio performed as, as not only the Ferrari CEO, but the Ferrari chairman and the Fiat CEO. Sergio started with Fiat in 04 when he became CEO, and well, then there was a the financial crisis. And in 09 uh, is when they bought their first uh, stake in, in Chrysler. Um, but it wasn't until 2014 that things really started to change for Sergio. He got more involved with Ferrari. Fiat Chrysler became one and went, went on the stock exchange. And at that time, uh, Sergio was kind of butting heads with the leadership of Ferrari. Uh, see, Sergio was, a, was kind of a global, globally minded person. And so whenever he started to approach Ferrari, uh, well, he naturally butted heads because uh, the leadership at that time didn't want to increase production. They didn't want to, uh, they didn't want to really explore electricity or SUVs or anything, anything like that. Uh, but Sergio won out. He kind of forced out Luca, and he became the chairman and CEO of Ferrari. Uh, and that was around 2014 uh, because his big plan was to take Ferrari public. And that made a lot of money, and uh, he was very successful again in growing the business. And he did really well with that. It wasn't popular with fans, but now the question is, who is next? The person that replaces Sergio at Fiat, he's just a CEO of Fiat, is Mike Manley. He is a former CEO of Jeep and Ram. Um, he did really well with them. Ram is its own brand now, it's separate from Dodge. And, and um, the big thing is that he worked very closely with Sergio for many years. And so you have this guy coming into Fiat who's very successful with some SUV brands. We're pretty doubtful that they're gonna that he's gonna stop any sort of plan for a Ferrari SUV. So I guess for Ferrari fans, that's not the greatest news. So the new Ferrari CEO is Louis C. Camilleri, and he's actually been on the board of Ferrari since 2015. Uh, so he, he's a fan of Ferrari, he knows Ferrari, and um, he, he, he had a relationship with Sergio. Um, one, of the, one of his things is he's, he's very committed to Formula One, and that's because he was, he was former CEO of Philip Morris, the, the, the large international tobacco company. And as we know, tobacco companies, especially Marlboro, have a close relationship with Ferrari and, and Formula One racing um, altogether. He has some mentors and some, some connections within Formula One, and so he will, he will probably be good, a good advocate for Ferrari and Formula One. Camilleri is very business-minded, and so he probably shares the same outlook as Sergio as far as uh, having a, being a global brand, being big. Um, he's used to having 80,000 employees, now he has 3,000. Not necessarily a bad thing, um, but it doesn't seem like that's going to really deviate from Sergio's plans. The most important, most influential person really is the new Ferrari chairman. And I say that because his name is John Elkin and he's an Agnelli. Yes, the Agnelli family that, that, that owns Fiat, that, that has owned Fiat since since 1800s. He has been so influential in Fiat, um, and the, whole, the company as a whole, uh, so much so that he was appointed to, to the board of Fiat at, at the age of 21. And he's actually responsible for, for Sergio Marcon's uh, appointment to CEO of Fiat. He convinced Sergio to come in altogether. And so, yeah, there's a, there's a considerable age difference there, uh, but John Elkin is, is, a, is a very business savvy at Nelly. He's now the chairman of Ferrari, and he had a very close relationship with Sergio, so much so that he's the reason Sergio was even with Fiat and Ferrari to begin with. Honestly, Sergio did well for the Agnellis. They did well for John Elkin. Whenever Sergio took the company public, it made the Agnellis a lot of money. The Agnellis had reinvested in Fiat during the financial trouble uh, to really help bail them out, and um, that was at the request of Sergio and John Elkin, who then obviously, like I said, made them a lot of money. Uh, all of these people uh, don't really seem to be deviating from, from Sergio's leadership or his goals. Uh, we can still probably expect production numbers to, to rise. We can expect growth and new technologies and pro probably an EV and an SUV. The only difference is that now you have three people running these jobs. And so uh, it definitely won't be as efficient or as successful as Sergio. But he left behind a great company. He knew what he was doing. He had strong relationships with each of these people. And that just kind of signals further commitment to Ferrari's goals and Fiat's goals altogether.